Hello and welcome to week two of the Airstream Quilt Along. Today we are going to talk about gradients. I hope you had a lot of success with um, the Flamingo, Gloria Flamingo. Um, I've just loved seeing all of your um, beautiful blocks. So today I thought I would talk about um, gradients and using color with um, your your Airstream block. If I could spit out the words today that would be awesome. So I have behind me on my uh, quilt wall a few different blocks and I will move out of the way so that you can see them and I will take them off. But uh, one thing that I thought would be helpful is um, maybe this is your first time using fabric um, as a type of crayon or paint and I wanted to talk, to talk about how to select fabrics if you haven't done so already um, and if you're wanting to kind of explore different colors um, how you would use fabric fabrics um, and the different colors using low volume or solids to create um, a, a shading effect to create a 3d um, look so I wanted to talk about a few different ways that you can do it so this is um, a, it's kind of based off of a Bambi or a globe trotter, and it's solid. I just wanted it to just be really simple and not have a lot of um, shading going on. So with this one, I just used a Kona solid for um, for just the the base of the trailer, and then for the shadows underneath of the eyebrow, I used a low volume. Um, I think it's Zen Chic by Moda. So I use that over just the two eyebrows, and then I will use quilting for um, around the door, and then probably also around uh, where the panels would meet up, and that's going to create a little bit of extra definition. So for this quilt, oops, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, so for this quilt, I um, wanted it just to be just flat. What this does, if you just use one color or maybe two for the shadows, so for, um, actually for these other ones, I, I really wanted the pattern to be as simple as possible, and I didn't put um, eyebrows in. Um, so one thing that you could do is, maybe just in a select area, use a print, so like this would be your one print and then you could do it all solid. It will completely change the look of the whole pattern. It won't make it look bad at all. It'll just change the look. Actually this one does have an eyebrow. So you could have this and this is next week's um, pattern. You can piece it anytime you want. But um, So there is an eyebrow shadow right here uh, and you could do just um, have all of the fabric one color like this one is and then um, just do the eyebrow in a different color and then maybe just have prints for other things. So what that does is that draws the attention to maybe these areas instead of the eye looking around and seeing absolutely everything. So let's talk about this one. Um, in this one I wanted the sun to be setting so I knew that the lightest area would be up here at the top and then these would be darker areas and then the kind of the light would be playing off of the side panels here. And maybe you'll want to test it and play around. I think what I wish I would have done is instead of this middle um, panel being, oh goodness, generally I pin these up so, <laughs> so that they stay. Um, so. But I think I, if I was to redo this one, and I, I will redo it in future blocks, I've got a total of 20 blocks that need to be done. So I think what I would do in this section is to use maybe this shade down here or something that is in between these two. So it just adds a little bit of extra definition. But I didn't want to be adding too many colors. Um, I try to keep the color palette to a minimum. It creates kind of a mod more modern palette, and then it keeps the eye... Um, kind of going around. So I used to sell clothes and um, I would teach women how to dress their body shape and what colors to wear. So one of the secrets that I shared with them is that 
um, you want to create a piece of art and keep the eye moving around the body. So that's the same thing that you want to apply to your quilt and your quilt block is keep the eye moving around. So if you have a good use of color, it's going to keep the eye moving around. The, the caveat is if you have too much color, it can kind of be overwhelming and make things a little bit confusing. So generally I try to keep my, pa my color palette to about five. Um, that doesn't always happen. So um, in this one, again, the sun is coming from the top and um, I will have a little science um, bit for you in just a quick second. So these two are the same pattern. Okay, there we go. Um, and I had different color placements. So you can see that it, it totally changes. This one looks like it's more the sun is setting in the desert. Um, and this one, it just has a very, very different feel. I almost feel like this one's a little bit Darth Vader-ish <laughs> compared to this, but you know, that's really uh, very true of the vintage Airstream, um, prior to the end of the 50s, they did have kind of the Darth Vader look on the back end. So I think a whale tail definitely does look a little bit more um, Darth Vader-ish. So with this one, again, the sun is coming more from this direction, from up above, or maybe even from the front of the trailer. So this part is going to be much darker. So um, I used a darker shade here, and then I used the same two colors here and here. And then um, these panels are all the same. And then just I wanted just the tippy tippy top to be a different color so that it gives the illusion that the, the sun is coming from in front of the trailer or on top of the trailer. And it's just kind of going all the way around. Obviously, it's not going to be exact, right, because we don't have all of the panels that the um, Airstream has, so it's going to look, it'll give this suggestion, right? And that's kind of what we want to achieve with this, is have the, the suggestion. So then with this one, I kept my palette even less, where I wanted the sun light to be coming from the front and have, you know, you see a reflection of whatever is um, behind the viewer kind of like you would see off of your windows, and then these parts are going to be a little bit darker. But then with the bumper, this is the shadow of the bumper, um, this is all one color as opposed to this one where there's a little bit more of a gradient. So in any regard, it's going to totally work out and absolutely look amazing. So here's a little science experiment. Actually, this might work without the the flashlight. I have kind of fluorescent -y lights up above me and so this tennis ball is kind of going to represent your airstream and the light is coming from right up here. You can see it kind of bouncing off of me. So the sun, the light is coming from here so you can see that the shadows here are going to be darker and there is more of a gradient here. You can see that it's almost white. So let me see if I can turn off the light and see if this changes. So here you can see that there's almost no change in um, in the color. It's almost uniform, right? But we can, by having a flashlight shine on it on one, direct, one side or the other, you can see that it completely changes it. Now this might be a little bit of a throwback to a science class, but um, you can apply the same thing to selecting colors for your Airstream blocks. Another thing that you can do is take pictures of your Airstream or look online for various different pictures. I have pulled just a variety of different ones. Here is, um, this might not work quite as well. So here is an old vintage, and I'm totally blanking on the name of this one. I apologize. I think Tailwind? I know it's one of the originals and the name has completely escaped me. But what's nice about these really old vintage trailers is that the sun does not reflect in the same way it does if you have 
a polished Airstream. So here is mine in, um, this was in Capitol Reef, and you can see that the sunlight, I can post these into a, an album so then you can see them a little bit better, but I know you've had this experience if you have a polished Airstream where you see the sky up here and then you know, kind of see the reflections everywhere else. So what you could do, and I've been playing around with this a little bit, is maybe I'll use a blue very similar to whatever shade I would use up here in the sky. So I would maybe select a blue up here. Um, I'm not quite sure what I would do for the, the panel, but let's say that you would use a, a blue up in these areas, and then you would use almost this light white or one of these dovey colors for around the bottom, and then maybe just the corner panels are a darker color. So then it gives kind of a realistic look to um, how things actually look. Again, a polished trailer is much more challenging. Let me see if I can turn down the color on here so maybe you can see it there. That's a little bit better. Um, so in this one, the top is going to be almost white and then the bottom is going to be um, kind of this darker color. One other thing that you can do is take um, a photo and you can turn it black and white on if you have a smartphone. Um, you can just make it pl play with it, uh, the levels to change to black and white and that might really help you to see where the uh, variations are, the gradations in the color and make it maybe a little bit easier for you to help to help you select some colors. Um, and I think this is just one final one. Um, this was in, where were we? Uh, the Great Sand Dunes. Um, and this is another example. You can see that this part of the reflection here is a darker color, similar to what I had here and in this one as well. where this part is darker, maybe what I might do in the future is maybe change these to be lighter on the sides. But if you see, it's it's almost, let's see if we can do this, there we go. Um, you can see that here and here are both darker. These panels here and here are lighter. And then the sides of the trailer are much darker. So um, that might help you kind of get an idea of what colors you might want to use. So if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. <clears throat> I'm going to be working on a video for how I fussy cut the license plate. If you would like to use your selvages. So for this one, I used um, an AGF selvage and then for this one I used, um, I think this was Mayfield, and this one says Rome Sweet Rome, and it did get the buy I had intended on cutting that off, and it snuck in there anyway. Um, so you can use salvages, and I have a video. It um, just has a few more things that I need to add to it. So um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I can't wait to see your whale tails this week. Um, I'm just so excited. So anyway, I will talk to you later. Bye.